in the last class uh, we looked at uh, steady, state, steady state solutions of the cable equation right uh, we derived the cable equation then looked at uh, how you can find out the steady state distribution of voltage on a tender tree of, ar of arbitrary size and geometry so uh, if you have a tender tree we found out how you can uh, uh, you know back propagate from the seal lengths of the dendrites right and then find the input impedance and then find the mouth voltage and propagate forwards again and find the voltage distribution across over the entire tree but point is uh, steady state analysis is not uh, going to take us very far because it's not sufficient right it's one only one part of the solution uh, because the more interesting questions will be to find out what happens if i inject some a pulse current into the dendrite somewhere and how it propagates towards the soma and how all these different waves uh, which originate from different parts of the dendritic tree uh, reach the soma and then produce an action potential these are some interesting questions so for that we need to solve the cable equation in the time domain it's not enough just to write and do a steady state the solution so let us begin to do that so here is the cable equation now one simplification we have to do before we proceed to uh, find the time domain solution is to change the coordinates to uh, right for you have you know x and t coordinates to uh, time dependent you know to a dimensionless form so we already introduced this quantity called electrotonic distance uh, right uh, in the previous analysis so capital x is equal to small x by lambda similarly there is also a dimensionless time quantity uh, capital t is equal to small t by tau m right and because both are the these are the two main parameters that show up in the equation so if you make these substitutions let us see how the equation changes now part of this substitution is pretty straightforward but one part which is how do you change the external current that i injected i inch right how do you change it from the small x and small t coordinates to the capital x and capital t coordinates that's a bit tricky so to understand that uh, methodology let us uh, proceed systematically <coughs> so first of all let us define for voltage let us define two functions two forms of the voltage distribution one is v bar one is v so v bar m and v and vm so v bar m is a function of capital x and capital t and vm is a function of small x and small t now both both are the same it is just that uh, they are represented in different uh, you know units or different scaled uh, you know parameters variables so now let us see how the derivatives are related because we are going to substitute the derivatives in the cable equation so uh, if you look at the space derivative right take do vm by do x so that that is equal to do vm bar by do capital x times d x d capital x by uh, d small x sorry that is that should be d not do so d is a capital x by d small x is 1 by lambda so we know that right therefore this is equal to 1 by lambda into do vm bar by do x do capital x if you do spatial derivative once more that is uh, do square vm by do x square is equal to you'll get the same thing again you get one more factor of uh, d dx by dx d capital x by d small x so therefore you'll have 1 by lambda square times do square vm bar by do capital x square so that is the relationship between vm and vm bar this is the second derivative of space so similarly if you look at the time derivative uh, do vm by do small t is equal to do vm bar by do cap t times uh, d cap t by d small t so that is equal to 1 by tau m times do vm bar by do, do capital t so this is a relationship for the uh, time derivative this part is straight forward so basically you can see even in this equation that we can simply absorb lambda into x so take lambda down Uh, you get uh, x by lambda, so that is capital X. So it just becomes do square vm by do capital X square. Similarly, same thing here. Should this should be tau m? So tau m we can bring down and then absorb it into this. Okay, so that is uh, space and time derivatives. Now let us come to how to represent this uh, I injected. Now I injected. You must notice that it is a current density. That is, uh, it is the density. It is a current given at every every point along the cable. right and its current therefore it is charged for uh, time so therefore uh, it is a charge injected uh, in a unit distance right per unit time so that is the that is the current density that is i so let us define a quantity called uh, capital q 
right capital q x small x small t this is defined as a charge passing through the segment of the cable between the origin and the x distance and between the origin and the time duration so okay so the zero x uh, interval of space and zero t interval of time uh, how much charge has passed into the cable in the space of zero x and zero time zero t so now once you define q like that uh you can define uh, so since current injected is is a density both in terms of space and time uh so because it is amperes per centimeter kind of units so right that is uh, injected so that will be equal to dou square q small x small t by dou small x dou small t so there's a definition of i inject in this uh, original coordinates small x and small t so since these two functions are related are the same only thing is that defined in different uh, set of different set of variables <coughs> if you do, if you relate <coughs> do square q bar by do capital x do capital t uh, with the do square q by do cap do small x do small t just like before you can see that uh, you, you get two factors coming out one by lambda and one by tau m okay so therefore uh, you can relate i in capital x capital t by lambda tau m is equal to i in small x small t so this is that is how you relate the injected current so when you introduce injected current that uh, defined in terms of the dimensionless variables capital x and small t you get this additional factor of 1 by lambda uh, tau m so by the way uh, this analysis i am taking from kissop cox book biophysics of computation and particularly this particular uh, conversion right i felt is uh, much better defined in uh, are explained in this book uh, tuckwell introduction to theoretical neurobiology so this uh, section is from that so if you make this substitution you get a new equation in dimensionless uh, form we had which is where you have do square vm by do capital x square is equal to do uh, so here i am making again so we defined a new form vm bar uh, just to make sure that we, there's no confusion between these two functions that two separate functions indicating the same thing and they are defined over different uh, variables but otherwise once you have this uh, function you want to understand what it is we'll just remove this uh, bar uh, dash on top and write the equation without the dash we just to keep the notation simple but what we mean is this new function so it is do square vm by do x square is equal to do vm by do x do t uh, plus vm minus i in j capital x capital t by this new vector that comes in Uh, which is lambda times uh, a cm because uh, we have uh, rm rm here rm by tau m gives you cm okay so because tau m is rm cm so you get get cancelled out okay so once you have the equation in this dimensionless form let us uh, try to solve this what is the solution for this so to find solution since it's a partially finished equation you need to have to find the boundary conditions and initial conditions boundary condition is uh, that the vx uh, tends to zero as you go to infinity in space so which is reasonable because uh, assume that the we are passing finite amount of current and that won't be able to produce finite voltage at infinite distance so this is fine and uh, the initial condition is basically the voltage is zero everywhere at time t equal to zero so that is the initial condition so now imagine that you inject an infinitely short uh, brief pulse okay so that is like a delta function so i in is equal to uh, uh, i not time i not which is equal to q not by tau m okay so some charge right which is quickly delivered and i am using the tau m as a unit of time of a scaling parameter for time and this is given as a delta as, a, as an impulse so therefore i in just a function of small x and small time or actually uh, yeah or which is same as capital x and small capital time is i not times uh, delta x and delta t so this should be sorry in capital x and capital t so this is an impulse both in space and time so that's what is given to the equation and the solution for that is just given uh, we're not deriving it but if you want you can substitute this expression in the original equation and verify for yourself that is correct you can it's a straight forward uh, exercise so you see that this is a function of both space and time only thing is uh, space appears at only at one point in the in this part in the exponential in fact this is like a form of a gaussian so you can see that the space distribution is like a gaussian right and uh, 
with a denominator and a time in the denominator and time distribution is more complicated there is a 1 by root t root t term uh, right and then there's a e power minus t term so time variation is more complicated so this is this expression is also denoted as v delta capital x small t because this is the voltage response of the cable of the infinite cable to an impulse current to a delta current okay so now you know that uh, if you want to find the response to an arbitrary current so i am giving an arbitrary current uh, i inject a t right where i am injecting the spatially it is a delta so there must there is a delta x right factor but temporarily it's an arbitrary signal so if you give that then the voltage distribution then that you get will be the v delta function which is this convolved with the i inject uh, say, signal which is i inject of time and you know conversion operation is defined like this right uh, so it is a tau m by this thing so v delta x uh, t prime which is a convolution variable right then i inj times capital t minus capital t prime uh, integral d t prime because this is just the definition of the convolution operation so if it so basically if you know the response of the linear system to an impulse you can generalize it to the response to any arbitrary input right by convolving that uh, input i with the uh, impulse response so this is standard uh, uh, result from linear system theory and we are just using it here okay so now let us try to understand the solution what is it like because thing is first of all we'll have some intuitive uh, expectations about what the solution will look like because we've been drawing pictures right of how the you know the signal propagates and so on so now we'll see, you can see that some of those pictures are not quite accurate and we need a better uh, uh, characterization because we've been drawing pictures like this so let me see if i can yeah so we've been drawing pictures like this it starts like this and goes like this all that stuff you know it looks nice and intuitively to make some arguments but it's not quite correct because if you see the this expression in terms of space it is like a gaussian so it is like this it's always symmetric right and it's not moving like this it's always symmetric in space only in time it has more complicated variation so this the toy pictures i've been drawing since the beginning they're not quite accurate especially if you give your impulse current uh, in the beginning of a cable yeah, right so we have we have been drawing pictures like this where the wave goes in one direction but if i give an impulse current in the middle of a long cable right i produce some voltage which way will the voltage go this way or this way i mean most reasonably it should go in both directions okay so so let us get some clarity on exactly what happened uh, so and let's analyze the solution so this is the solution and the same thing we, we can uh, express in slightly simpler terms but we have all these constant terms i not rm 2 lambda pi and all let's move out all the constant terms you call it k and you get 1 by root t times e to the minus x square by 4t times e to the minus t so now for simplicity let us take log on both sides so you get log t log k minus uh, half log t minus x square by 4t right minus t so you see that if you look at this purely as a function of uh, time right uh, this term dominates the other two terms. so The, these are there are two terms uh, actually three terms are functions of time and only one term which is function of space so if you look at the functions that uh, depend the terms that depend on time this is 1 over t so it dies right with a uh, long time this is log t it increases but increases slowly this is t so obviously this term rises and increases much faster in magnitude it is negative so it increases in magnitude much faster than the other two terms which depend on time okay let us remember that so therefore if you plot this uh, function right in uh, uh, in the log log space right in the sorry in the log space x is just a time you see that uh, with the long time you can neglect this you can neglect this and this alone remains with a constant term okay so it's simply like a it's straight line so the log v versus time relationship will be like a straight line for uh, for a long time so you can see that here now let us look at what happens at all times you know, not just long time but you know even for shorter times so shorter term so now um, 
so the full function is like this but if you look at only the spatial variation at a given time so absorb all the time terms you know into the constant so we will get fixed time so what is the voltage distribution as a function of space for any given time so that will be of this form so it's a purely a gaussian okay so for a short time in fact for zero time you see that this will blow up and uh, here also here it will be actually so bit tricky because uh, at zero time and uh, uh, finite x uh, this will go to infinity so minus infinity so e power minus infinity goes zero and uh, the denominator also you have zero so you have a you know zero by zero indeterminate form we use elhaus hospital's rule you have to we have to solve what happens but zero x and zero t right it actually go to in, go to infinity so that's what is shown by this this peak here but otherwise for uh, finite x and zero t this part goes to minus infinity then you, this thing so therefore uh, this thing becomes zero this also becomes zero but this goes to zero much faster than this so therefore the zero wins so at uh, finite x at uh, finite x and zero t right uh, you have a uh, this will go to zero but uh, otherwise for zero x and zero t you have an indefinite form we have actually a singularity there okay so for small t you have a gaussian which is the uh, so small t means uh, the denominator is small that means the gaussian is more narrow right <coughs> and the area under the curve remains the same because the same charge is getting distributed over the entire table so in the in the short time this will be quite peaky right and uh, as time increases the width of the gaussian increases the gaussian increases and the peak also goes on because for uh, uh, along, uh, right because area under the curve on the whole is small and even k prime also goes down with increasing time okay because of this term and this term so it so if you look at spatial uh, voltage distribution as as a as a function of space and look at it at, at various times for small times it is sharp and peaky for large times it becomes flatter and flatter now similarly let us look at voltage distribution as a function of time uh, for a given x so that means imagine that uh, you know you are uh, right so let us say this is the cable and uh, so you are yeah, so you are injecting current here uh, this is my uh, sorry this is x equal to 0 and uh, two people are standing here okay and uh, let's call this x1 and x2 right now what kind of so you will see that they'll see the wave passing from here so that means they'll basically see so wave passing can be misleading you know you will think of it there's some kind of a tra traveling wave going on but to define it strictly what uh, they are looking at is what is the voltage variation at wherever they are okay, how does it vary right so th so this is voltage as a function of time uh at uh, x at x1 and voltage as a function of time right at x so if you're standing at two points x1 x2 on the cable what kind of voltage do you see do you measure at these points so that means uh, you are looking at variation through time uh, while, while you fix space so that waveform will look something like this okay so for x equal to 0 like i said uh, you know x equal to 0 and time equal to 0 it will it will go to infinity there's a singularity right so therefore this curve goes out of the bounds here but later on for any finite x uh, it doesn't go to infinity because if you uh, do el hospital's rule you will find that it is finite uh, the indeterminate form is actually finite and it will go to a peak value at some finite time and after that it goes off to zero okay and uh, if you measure the same thing as these are x these are x values x equal to 0 x equal to 0.5 and so on if you measure the same thing at different x values the peak keeps proceeding to the right but uh, you know the curve also becomes flatter so the thing is if you want to see really a traveling wave because uh, we've been talking about how wave travels along the internet and all that you want to see something like that okay so it's not that simple because the wave is kind of moving to the right but it is also flattening out so you can't really call it a wave so it's it's not that simple okay to talk about a traveling wave and talk about its velocity 
So, but we'll try to do something about it uh, in very shortly. Let us see that. Now, just one more result here. Uh, voltage response to current step is uh, so current into st the step current, right? You know, it's, you give a constant current, and that remains constant after zero, after time equal to zero. So then again, it's just uh, integral of your uh, delta response, impulse response, the so voltage response to the impulse current. Again, that happens to be an error function, ERF, right? Uh, function of uh, root. Okay, that's just one simple result. Now we'll try to derive something called a propagation velocity on a dendrite. It's a bit tricky question because, like I said, you don't have a real propagating wave and wave keeps dying and doesn't even actually uh, spread in the sense of how you would imagine a sine wave, like a traveling wave. So, uh, but let us see how, if you can even give any meaning to this idea of a prop propagation velocity. The thing is, the linear cable equation does not admit any wave equation, any, any wave solution. Right? So therefore, to due to dissipation of energy through the uh, passive cable. Right? So what we have seen that if you have an action button, if you have an axon with voltage sensitive channels, Right, then you can have a traveling wave. But in uh, in the dendrite, you cannot have that. So the problem is it doesn't allow a traveling wave solution. But traveling wave solu solution, sorry. Okay, for traveling wave solution, V of x c must be of the form uh, V omega t minus k x. Right. So that means at a given time, so, so let us say uh, this is my cable that I'm looking at this point x. And this is x plus delta x. At this point, the, the wave has some phase. Okay, so it is increasing or decreasing, whatever, there is some phase. So now what we'll see is at a further down distance, at a later time, okay, the, do you hit the same phase, right? If you see that, then there's a traveling wave. Okay, so let us say omega t minus kx is equal to some phase value, I'll call this phi naught. Okay, so at a later time, omega t plus delta t uh, minus k into x plus delta x, I have the same phase, right? If suppose that happens, then take the difference and you get uh, omega delta t is equal to k into delta x. So delta x by delta t is equal to omega by k. Right? This is the units of velocity. Okay, so this is called uh, phase. Sorry, phase velocity. Right now, the cable the equation doesn't allow any such solution of this form. So where the dependence of space and time is in this form, omega t minus k x. Right, uh, so but then can we define a propagation velocity even though it doesn't give the, have this kind of solution by some kind of an extended uh, definition? Can we define something called a propagation velocity? And let us look at that. So, first of all, to define something like a traveling wave which has certain propagation velocity, right, you can approach it in two, two ways. You can approach the question in two ways. One is in approach one, we'll ask. Where is the wave at time t1? Okay, suppose this question, wave is like some waveform, right? So uh, at uh, so at uh, time t1, let us look at the voltage distribution along length. And then we ask the question, right? Now, where is this wave? Okay, let us say we can ascertain and give a number to that as x1. So similarly, later on at time t2, we'll draw the waveform as a function of space and say, where is this wave? And let us say we get an answer like x2. So then the velocity is simply depend on x2 minus x1 by t2 minus t1. Okay, but uh, is this possible? Because if you look at the voltage distribution as a function of space, right, at a fixed time, right, it looks like this, because we know it looks like a Gaussian. So at a time t1, it looks like this Gaussian. Okay, and at time t2, it looks like this Gaussian. And uh, so if I say, now where is this wave at time? What does it even mean, where is this wave? So one way to think about it is in terms of peak, right? Uh, so the peak, uh, you can say, is indicates the location of the wave because so this is x-axis, right? 
now so in but the problem here is in both cases at t1 and t2 the wave peak hasn't moved at all it's at uh, zero right so both x1 and x2 are zero so velocity will be zero which doesn't make any sense okay so <coughs> now one another way to define uh, some kind of intuitively location of the wave is uh, look at center of gravity let us say center of gravity for this is here and for this it is here even center of gravity will be at zero because is unfortunately this wave is symmetric in space right so cg doesn't move and you cannot define anything like a propagation velocity so something seems to be fundamentally wrong okay so let us try another approach let us ask this time when is it at t1 so it is like you know you, we saw that uh, question where uh, where you have a cable and uh, you know two people are standing so the wave uh, the current is injected here and two people are standing and measuring right the wave and and asking the question so this guy is at x1 this guy is at x2 okay when does the wave come to x1 okay and when does the wave come to x2 so this is what these guys are asking right uh, so if if you can uh, define that uh, time right then again so this this guy is at x1 and x2 so that if you can determine the time so what is t1 and uh, what is t2 right then the propagation velocity is simple x2 minus x1 by x2, t2 minus t1 but to do that the problem is uh just look at how the voltage varies as a function of time at x1 sorry at x1 the wave is like this the voltage wave is like this as a function of time at x so at x2 it is like this so now when how how can you answer this question when is it at x1 so if you take the p right uh, so we know this uh, expression that that uh, k into 1 by root t times e power minus x square by 40 all that now if you take that whole expression as a function of time and find the coordinate of the peak right uh, this this value right and uh, so so similarly for this waveform which is at x find the peak coordinate and find that time i'll call that the tp right the tp at 1 not tp at x1 and then similarly for this find the peak coordinate call that tp at right at uh, tp at 1 and tp at 2 right and uh, when calculate this x2 minus x1 by t2 minus t1 if you do that laboriously you will find that it's not a constant it it uh, varies with time so it's some kind of a non uniform velocity so that doesn't make much sense and it's not very satisfactory so to use the tp as a function of x you know is uh, as as a as an indicator of when the wave has arrived at x1 or x2 right that is not a very good definition so can we try some other definition so well basically we are trying to come up with a notion of a traveling wave for the cable equation okay so let me see this okay so um so t peak uh, as a function of x is too complicated so let us try one more uh, notion which is instead of looking at t peak let us try like you know t centroid right so this is let's say t centroid of this is here and t centroid of this is here okay uh, so then what we'll do is uh, we'll say that the velocity is x1 is x2 by t centroid at x1 minus t centroid at x2 right then at least shall we do you think we will get a constant velocity let us see that so how do you find the centroid so if you have so has some function h of x comma t in in this case it is voltage but we are talking in more general terms right we want to know at a, at a given x right what is the what is the centroid time coordinate of the centroid right of this so centroid is given as integral t times h of x comma t dt by integral h of x comma t dt okay so that gives you centroid and that gives you the time coordinate of the centroid so the so this value okay and uh, that quantity i am defining as so this is notation p hat uh, superscript h and uh, in subscript x that means p hat is this uh, centroid uh, indicator centroid and for the of the time coordinate <coughs> this superscript h defines for what function we are calculating and uh, subscript x defines for what what is other variable which is in this case space variable x okay so like that uh, let us define uh, some you know, let us kind of you know, propose an answer to the question 
when is it at x1 or when is it at certain space uh, coordinate x so we'll use this uh, definition as centroid so we are tracking the motion of the centroid of the wave so now with this notion we'll try to define a uh, propagation delay right so that means how long does a wave take in this sense to go from a location x1 to location x2 or location x to location y right if you can ascertain that and give a value to that then the propagation velocity is simply uh, x minus y by t1 minus t2 okay so so here uh, so that means if i inject i inject some current here to keep it simple since it's a linear system it is enough if i inject uh, an impulse current without loss of generality that i give an impulse current right and for this i calculate this tx so for the i at location x what is this t hat so that, that is you apply the same formula and calculate that since the impulse current the centroid is at uh, at the same point okay so it's very simple now once i give an impulse current here at time t equal to 0 and location x uh, current wave form will be like this voltage wave form will be you know it will have some duration voltage will spread out slowly and if you go to a distant location and look at the voltage wave form that will look like this okay so it will go to peak at a finite time and so on so okay so now let us calculate the centroid coordinates of the current here, current wave form here and the voltage wave form here right now the difference between those two so uh voltage wave so for the centroid of time for the voltage wave form here and uh, the current wave form here if you take that difference that t hat v y minus t hat i x that quantity is called transfer delay that is the reference centroid of induced voltage at y right and the centroid of the injected current at x that is the centroid by centroid what we mean is centroid time right what's the difference between centroid time of the induced voltage at a far off location y and the centroid of the injected current at the location where right at x t which is where you inject in the current so that quantity is defined as uh, transfer delay denoted by d subset x y which is this <coughs> so one interesting thing about it is which is easily you know uh, expected that if you take an infinite cable and uh, if i give an impulse current here and measure the voltage here find the transfer delay similarly you turn your switch your positions inject current here at y and measure the voltage here at x and again do the uh, do the same calculation the quantity will be the same what it's saying is that relationship uh, is symmetric right and uh, the transfer delay d of d subscript x y is equal to d subscript y x so sorry and it is uh, true no matter what the electrical structure of the cable is so for arbitrary geometries as long as the cable is completely passive and uh, is governed by the cable equation right the transfer delay is symmetric which is very interesting now let us try to calculate the centroid values for some uh, simple cases so let's start with isopotential neuron that means uh, so you have a cable right normally the potential is not the same along the cable if you inject one current at a given point potential is highest there and falls off in or both directions so suppose you assume a isopotential condition what that means the potential is same all all along the cable that means ri is in a way zero therefore ri is zero so therefore to understand that it is enough if i study the uh, you know response of the cable at one point because ri is anyway zero everywhere right <clears throat> so uh, if i do that in inject current here so i am just looking at response of a simple rc circuit and that will be you know like a so that that will be like a simple falling exponential and if you calculate so if you actually solve this equation uh, given in given impulse current i right solve this equation you get a falling exponential like this and for that you calculate the centroid right and the, the time coordinate of that will be actually tau m tau m is nothing but right rm times c. so it's simple algebra you can show that so let us now look at slightly more complicated case let us take a semi infinite cable i'll inject an impulse current right into the cable right and uh, look at the voltage here that will also be like this so it's like this and if you try to calculate the cg of this right this will be tau m by 2 
in the previous case where we assumed isoponential condition which is a simpler situation right if the cg is at uh, tau m but if you take the semi infinite cable and do the same exercise uh, for the voltage waveform the cg will be at tau m by 2 okay now let us look at the more general case that is if i have uh, a cable and injecting current here and measuring the voltage here uh, the impulse current so the time at which this is given is is given as t hat i for a current current waveform i uh, at x right and the uh, the distance y if you look at the voltage waveform and find the centroid value that is this and if you look at this the d of x x y it will be calculated and you will get the expression 1 plus mod x uh, mod of x minus y by lambda times tau m by 2 so this is the dxy the transfer delay between x and y now to find out the problem is with the transfer delay is you are looking at the difference between the center of the current waveform and center of the voltage Centered of the current waveform at x and centered of the voltage waveform at y, but if you want to define propagation delay, what you should compare is centered of the voltage waveform at x and centered of the voltage waveform at y. Okay, so we need to also find out. So what we'll do is we'll find the transfer delay at x itself. That is d of x x. That means I inject the current at x and measure the voltage response at x itself. and look at the delay between current and voltage because even then there will be different delay between current and voltage right because of because it's there is an rc circuit so how do we do that uh so if if you're looking at the same point then x and y are the same so that will be zero so d of xx right uh, will be right so d of xx will be simply 1 times tau m by 2 which is tau m by 2 right so if you want uh, the propagation delay that is the difference between centroids of voltage at x and voltage in y so that will be the dxy minus dxx so if you do that you get x okay so if you note that this is the tra transfer delay then you know, given by notation pxx uh, sorry pxy right now this is the delay and uh, this delay is associated with the this spatial length right the spatial gap so the velocity you can think of some kind of velocity notion here which is distance which is like mod x minus y divided by delay so that will be uh, so basically mod x minus y by p x y is equal to this okay so that will give you basically 2 lambda by tau m and uh, if you if you relate them lambda and tau m to more basic quantities the resistivity and you know membrane resistance specific membrane resistance specific membrane capacitance and all that which will include the diameter of the cable we have done this in a couple of classes ago so if you take that then you will find that velocity right is proportional to some constant times square root of d so propagation velocity is proportional to uh, the square root of diameter so if you want to have twice the velocity you have to increase diameter by four times okay so this is a feature of uh, the cable but then again we must remember that uh, this is not a real velocity in the sense it's not like you know they have a traveling wave or anything which is what you will have if you go to the axonal side right uh, therefore this is also called a, sometimes this is called this it's a pseudo velocity right um, so this is a quite an important result now when it comes to actually solving dendritic uh, trees so this will be a disappointment for some of you guys because you would be wondering that we're going to solve the cable equation you know for in, in in the temporal sense uh, for all possible geometries and all that we're not going to do that uh, this analysis will only help you understand certain basic properties of how the wave propagates along the dendrite right? right because all the analysis is done for a kind of infinite cable but when it comes to the practical situation to find out the temporal variation of voltage on real dendritic trees we'll just depend on numerical simulation uh, which looks something like this in fact uh, this is called compartmental modeling and we'll be showing a demo of this uh, the coming friday 
So basically, if you want to find out the temporal variation, and for an arbitrary genetic tree, which looks like in the upper part of the figure, right? Then you represent this and the entire tree into a bunch of, in terms of a bunch of small cylinders. Okay, if you have a thinner cable, use thinner cylinders, and thicker cable, use thicker cylinders, right? And uh, length of the cable also will match the length of cylinder, and so on and so forth. So you do all that. Now each cylinder can be represented. As an RC circuit with some resistance, that is some actual resistances and the RC circuit at each point. So now, once you represent the entire tree as a big RC circuit, then you can numerically simulate and find do whatever you want. I mean, you can current inject current here, inject current anywhere in this cable, and then uh, look at how the voltage varies and how what how the voltage will build up towards because soma is somewhere here. How does the voltage build up? You know, as you towards the soma or at the soma because of all these currents injected at various points in the tender. Right, that's what we will do. We won't be solving the PD all the time because it's not practical. Right, uh, so we'll do that uh, next Friday. But tomorrow's class, what we'll do is we'll look at the two more things because we looked at the genetic processing and uh, the action, the action potential generation at soma is basically nothing but the Hodgson-Huxley model, and we have already done that. So two more things are remaining. <clears throat> how does signal propagate along the axon? Then how does new transmission occur? Right. So these two we'll try to finish uh, tomorrow. And then on Friday we can put everything together and simulate how all these things happen in a more realistic biophysical model of a neuron. Thank you.